intro again. Hey there, welcome to this uh, workshop brought to you by learn.wordpress.org. Uh, we are here to talk about WordPress in the indie web. Uh, we have David Wolfpaw with us today, um, who is a theme and plugin developer and a contributor to the photo and community teams on the open source project. Uh, they are a proponent for the indie web movement, which is what brings them here today. So that said, I will hand this off to David to share their presentation on WordPress and the indie web. Great, thank you. Let me get my presentation up here. All right, um, just want to confirm, can you all see my uh, screen? Perfect. Um, Good. Of course, the chat window went away for me when I opened it. There we are. Uh, yeah, so um, I do want to, um, since it wasn't recording before, I do want to echo something that Courtney said earlier, which is, um, all of these events, uh, the Learn WordPress events, uh, WordPress meetups, WordCamps, they're all community driven. And uh, I've been helping to organize meetups and WordCamps for a long time now. And uh, it is always um, important for us to get you know new speakers and to share the information that they have. Um, you do not have to be you know the most knowledgeable person ever, the best ever at anything. If you have some you know useful knowledge to share. Uh, we definitely love to have you. Um, myself as an example, I am giving this presentation while people who have written some of the plugins that I'm going to be talking about are here in the audience. Um, so I'm definitely not as uh, knowledgeable as they are about those things, but I really enjoy this topic and uh, I'm very glad that Courtney asked me to share with you. Uh, so my name is David. Um, so I, everyone's sharing where they're from. I'm in Winter Park, Florida. It's right near Orlando. Uh, I've been doing WordPress related things for 15 ish years now. Um, and I look forward to seeing whoever I'm going to see at WordCamp US this year. Um, but for today, I want to talk about the indie web. Um, I've been using software called Mastodon uh, for about almost seven years now um, since it's been around. Uh, and it's gotten a lot more notoriety in the past year. Uh, and we will talk about that in a moment. Um, but that's what really got me to think a lot more about how my website can fit into uh, a way to communicate and share myself outside of other social media platforms. Because uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, some of the social media platforms have had some issues lately. Uh, I'm no longer on Twitter and at certain times of day, nobody is either. <laughs> um, and if you, I've been paying attention to the news for the past week or so. Uh, Reddit has also been going through some uh, pains lately. Um, and so a lot of the subreddits that I used to look at, I cannot currently you know, go to and interact with now. Um, so there's a lot of knowledge on these other social media websites that can get lost. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to think that things are always going to be there. Uh, but if you put all of your content, all of your personal information, all the things that you have to share on someone else's website, uh, there is always the chance that it's not going to be available in the future. Um, so this I just stole directly from the IndieWeb website. Uh, the IndieWeb is a community of individual personal sites connected by simple standards based on the principles of, and the important parts are owning your domain, using it as your primary identity, and you publish on your own site. So you get to own your own data. Um, so we're gonna go over what all of these different things mean and how we can make that happen with our WordPress settings. Uh, but the core principles of the indie web are that all of your content is yours. You are better connected, and that means to uh, your content, but also to other people who you want to interact with. You know, let's say if people want to comment on things that you've written, you wanna do the same on someone else's website, uh, you have a lot more control. Uh, so when I'm talking about that, um, you can do things like host your own website. You can host it on pretty much any hosting company that you want. Uh, if you decide that you want to change hosting companies, you can do that. If you want to change the code for your website so that it can look a certain way, do specific things, you can do that. Um, and all those things, they sound familiar, hopefully, to all of us who are here because doesn't that just sound a lot like a WordPress website? And I think WordPress is a great place to jump in to learning about the IndieWeb. Um, 
not only is it because you can, uh, sorry, not only because you can get started with the website that you already have, but because a lot of people have built a lot of great tools that allow you to connect to other websites. So I'm going to go over a few plugins uh, to start with that we can use for the indie web. Um, I'm going to talk about the indie web plugin itself. I'm going to talk about the web mention plugin, MicroPub, IndieAuth, and syndication links. Um, there's quite a few more than this, but these are the probably, I would, I would say, good ways to get started. Uh, so the Indie Web plugin, um, that one is, uh, it has a few tools built into it. So it allows you to um, extend your user profile, and it has a lot of other plugins that are bundled up into it. So you can use it as a way to install other plugins. Um, so a lot of them that are in a lot of the plugins that I'm going to talk about are already in this Indie Web plugin. You can install it, and then when you're on the options page for it, you can choose to install and activate the other individual plugins, so you don't have to go looking for all of them separately. Um, also, I think Courtney mentioned that the slides are going to be shared with the video, so I have links to everything on all of the slides, and you'll be able to get them. Um, you know, I guess I moved too quickly. <laughs> Uh, one of the plugins that you can get from there is the web mention plugin. So a web mention notifies a URL when one URL links to another. Uh, basically what that means, and I, oops, I wrote defederated. Let me, uh, I'll update that to federated. Sorry. Um, uh, it allows you to federate your likes, comments, replies, posts, things like that. Basically, uh, you can use your own website to do something that interacts with another website. Um, a lot of these concepts can be very vague just by talking about them, I found. So there are a lot of screenshots here, so I can give examples of what I mean. Uh, so for example, um, on my personal website, I know this might be a little small, but I was trying to get a lot onto the page. Uh, I have a uh, blog post. It's you know up there off screen. Uh, but the important things for this blog post are uh, this comment in the middle. Uh, that is a comment that somebody wrote after I linked this post on Twitter. So I made a tweet, uh, posted the link to the uh, post on Twitter, and then somebody commented via Twitter. Um, I was able to use web mentions to get that back onto my website so that people can see that comment. Um, I'm also able to reply to comments and have it send them to Twitter. Um, that's a little different tool, but uh, I'm not gonna go over that one yet, in part, so I don't use Twitter anymore, and also would apply some later. Um, but also, if you look at the uh, likes, reposts, and mentions, again, those are also things that happened on Twitter. I posted a link to this article, uh, somebody on Twitter um, you know, hit the heart on that link, and uh, that shows up here. Uh, yes, this is, um, <laughs> yes, David, uh, this is an older uh, screenshot that I already had. Um, and again, that is in part because uh, since I last uh, took this screenshot, I'm uh, no longer using Twitter, uh, but it was a, I, I would say this is an easy example of one way that uh, they can interact. But yes, that one is uh, uh, <laughs> probably the most outdated screenshot I have here. Um, there are also uh, tools, uh, there's also a plugin you can install called MicroPub. Um, what that plugin allows you to do is use third party clients to post to your website. So, MicroPub itself, sorry, MicroPub, the plugin, uh, doesn't actually do the publishing. It allows you to connect to your website using other tools. Um, a lot of writers that I uh, use, a lot of writing apps that I use, I've used Obsidian. Uh, I use Notion, IA Writer, Bear. These are mainly Mac or web-based ones, but Windows-based ones can have that as well. Um, they can incorporate MicroPub into them where you can write via a separate writing app and then publish it to your website. Um, the screenshot that I'm using here is another kind of old screenshot of the Indie Book Club uh, app, um, in part because, you know, while it's interesting to say I can write using Bear, Ulysses, or something else, and post to my website. Um, 
you know, I could just write directly on my website. Who cares? Uh, but something like this shows uh, a format that is ideal for a specific use case. So in this uh, case, it posts to your website uh, information that you want to, uh, about books that you are reading, titles, authors, things like that. Basically information that would be very specific to this use case and not specific to other types of posts. Um, so they don't have to have all of this information. Uh, there's ones out there that are posting recipes, you know, food that you've eaten, places that you're traveling, things like that. Basically other apps that can be built to post to your website in a specific format. Uh, let's see, do I find that connections to various uh, social media platforms break it with free? Um, so yes, uh, I would say that is something that happens a lot with API changes on other websites. Um, that is something that uh, David is probably a lot more familiar with than me in terms of fixing them so that they continue working. Uh, a lot of walled garden social media sites don't really want to make it easy to share your information elsewhere. Um, and yeah, that's something that always has to be contended with. I know that a lot of uh, services no longer use Twitter as an example. I'm going to keep harping on them because they've made so many changes this year, uh, you know, that have broken a lot of interactions. Um, that is something that I would use as a good example for why to maintain your own website and why to maintain your own content. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the next question was, does any web still use browsers? Yeah, so um, how I would describe the indie web, you know, besides the definition I gave before, is more of a, I'm trying to go like more of a state of mind, <laughs> no, more, of, more of a concept, um, you know, an idea that all the information that you create, you manage it, you control where it goes, you control, you know, how you use it. Um, so it does require usually a bit more work than, you know, just writing a Facebook post, writing a, a comment on Reddit or something like that. Um, but it is something where you have more control and where you get to continue maintaining that content over time. I think that's important if you, you know, well, one, if, if anything that you want to share, if you thought it was important enough to share once, you probably want to keep it. Um, additionally, if you are writing it on your own website, you can still send things to other websites, but now you get all of the uh, SEO for it, you know, for whatever topic you're writing about, you can uh, change it later on the fly, you can just do things that you couldn't do with other platforms. Yeah, I would describe them putting uh, all my eggs into my own basket. Um, you know, I've had trouble with hosting companies before, but I've never had the kind of trouble that comes with accounts getting suspended or websites going down or, uh, you know, platforms getting bought out by billionaires who are just the worst. Uh, so I would rather trust myself than, uh, than trust them. Um, but as, uh, to, to better answer um, your question, you do still use a browser. You can use other apps to access uh, any web websites. It's more of a concept of, you know, who owns the content, where the content is. Uh, and I agree, David, I'm also uh, lazy. I do try to automate things. Um, I used to use some plugins. Um, I think it was, uh, I don't know how to pronounce Bo's last name, Bo Levins. I don't know if either of you do. Um, he uh, has a plugin called Keyring, uh, which will allow you to connect to other services and download those that content to your website. Uh, so as an example, I used to have it automatically pull um, Twitter posts that I made to my website and post them in a specific section, as well as things I did on GitHub. Um, it supports Facebook. I know it supports quite a few things, but uh, I've mainly just stopped putting them other places and just putting them on my own website. <laughs> um, sorry, moving on. The, the next plugin uh, that I want to mention is IndieAuth. Uh, so IndieAuth is a an, uh, a way to use OAuth. It's uh, sorry, I'm like <laughs> someone or now. IndieAuth is um, one format of OAuth that allows you to use your own website to provide identity for other websites. So if you've ever used an app or used a website that says "sign in via Facebook," "sign in via Twitter," "sign in via Google," uh, that's OAuth. 
Um, in this case, Indie Auth allows you to do the same thing with your own website, presuming that you're using another service that uh, allows it. Uh, so some of the Mastodon clients that I use allow you to use your own website for verification. Um, I know that some other people's websites to you know, log in and leave comments can allow you to do the same. Basically, I can prove I'm David because I was able to validate via David's website uh, that I could log in. The same as if you can log into the Twitter account or Facebook account, then you can prove that you are that account holder. Uh, next plugin that I want to mention is syndication links. Uh, so syndication links allows you to uh, add metadata uh, to your page and add formatting to show other places that you've posted your content. Uh, so I used to write my blog posts and then I would send them to Medium. And uh, Medium was one website that did allow you to um, put canonical links pointing to other websites. I do not know if they do that anymore because like all of the other ones, they've closed down, made most everything for uh, logged in or paid users only. Uh, but that would be one example. I could you know, write my own content, share it elsewhere, but still have any of the, um, you know, anyone who wants to go back to my own website and uh, any of the traffic come from it. Uh, David caught me for all of my screenshots from uh, the last time I gave this presentation, which yes, David, was when we uh, were chatting at WordCamp US in 2019. <laughs> I'm gonna go over to my new screenshots, which are all just uh, other websites. <laughs> so there are a lot of other non-WordPress things uh, that will allow you to establish your own online identity and reputation. Uh, these are the websites that I use more frequently now. Um, like I said, Mastodon is one that uh, has gotten a lot more popular over the past year. Um, if you are interested in microblogging, aka things like what Twitter does, um, it's one website I might suggest looking at. Uh, this example here is from the Mastodon instance that I've been hosting for uh, this one a bit over six years now. Um, so you can see I have a home timeline. That's the same as like everyone that you follow, you know, like any other social media website, uh, notifications that I've gotten, people who are uh, responding to me, things like that. Um, and then I also have a column just playing here uh, for the WordPress hashtag, um, just showing that you can still follow people who are, uh, you know, doing WordPress things. And you can uh, follow as many hashtags as you want. And so I could filter, you know, and show a whole bunch of them and just basically see exactly the content who I would like to, that I would like to see. Um, I really like this. It's been a much, much better environment for me than any other social media website. Uh, if, if you take one thing away from this, it's go check out federated social media websites. Uh, they are so much better for you. <laughs> um, you can also use micro.blog. Uh, so, um, Matt and Reese made a uh, service that is another microblogging service that can connect to a lot of websites. Uh, he built it, uh, he and his team built it with a lot of um, indie web uh, philosophy in mind. Um, so right now I'm just showing my, uh, I don't, quite honestly, I don't use it <laughs> much. I just have it cross posting things from my WordPress website, um, but you can post directly here, have it shared to your website back and forth, et cetera. Um, you know, these are the kind of sites that I would say, just go to it and click around and, you know, see what kind of other things people are posting. Uh, they have a great uh, discover section. Um, and I love it because they actually have curators that manually put things up there uh, in a variety of different topics. Um, you know, it's really nice that uh, there are people out there who are doing like what say Yahoo did back in the nineties where, you know, instead of just saying, here, here's the millions of things that are coming out every day, they choose the things that they find most interesting and highlight them. Um, and I mean, quite honestly, that's what I have time for these days. <laughs> Show me the good stuff. Um, there's also a uh, wonderful website called, or service, excuse me, called PixelFed. Uh, this is similar to Mastodon in terms of people can host their own PixelFed websites. Um, this one is basically Instagram-like, uh, and it'll uh, you know you can use it the same way you would use Instagram, including they're bringing stories uh, soon. Um, 
but as a service, since people can self-host these, meaning you could you know put it on your own server, host your own Pixel website, host your own content. Um, if you so choose and you say like, oh, I like photo sharing on Instagram, but I hate stories. Um, nice thing is that's something that you can enable or disable for yourself. Uh, you can also just completely choose, you know, who do I want to follow? Who do I not want to follow? Who do I want to be able to see me at all? Um, I think moderation is much harder. <laughs> uh, I think it's like much harder than the technical side is. And um, I am going to speak as a moderator. I don't think that the technical developers give moderators or site admins enough credit sometimes. Um, it's really nice that people can be given the tools to manage their own spaces better than they can other social media. Uh, again, that's the reason why I love this stuff. That's the reason why I've stuck with it for so long is because I have better, uh, I've built better connections. I'm able to, you know, have deeper conversations with people and I'm able to also protect all the members of my server from all the transphobes out there who want to come in and just put hateful messages in our chat. <laughs> Uh, finally, I'm going to, oops, sorry. Um, I also use Gravatar. Uh, Gravatar is from Automatic. It is uh, for uh, globally recognized avatars. Um, it's nice that you can go and add a profile. You can add pictures. Uh, you can add your various email addresses and different websites. And you can then use that to log in, or excuse me, you can use that for other websites that recognize Gravatars. Uh, not to log in with, but to display uh, this information. So as opposed to having to update your uh, profile information across dozens of websites, you only have to update it in one place. Um, I personally like that you can attach multiple email addresses to one account uh, so that you can put different profiles, different profile pictures, et cetera, based on which email address you're using. So there are a lot of other tools uh, that already exist out there that you know follow that same ethos of the web that don't require you to add new plugins to um, like all the things I said that, you know, you can set up your own servers for, you don't have to do so if you don't want to. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who already host these and you can take advantage of their resources. Um, but yes, uh, uh, agree with Jason. And if you do go to any of those sites, just thank the people who uh, are putting it up for you because uh, it's definitely a labor of love. <laughs> Um, so on your own website, uh, what are you going to do when you want to publish any web friendly content? Uh, you should try posting to your own website and then publish that elsewhere. Uh, that's referred to as Posse. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you should also get your own personal domain and hosting. Uh, I was going to originally say get a unique domain, but I realized that, you know, like my Twitter handle was a unique domain, but you know, what's that going to do when I don't control Twitter.com, I just control my handle there. Um, I, I would suggest, you know, getting your own domain and your own website somewhere. If you're using WordPress, you're probably already doing that. Uh, I will talk about uh, rel equals me in a moment, um, but use that to verify your identity on your own website and other websites. Um, you should also use microformats and HCard. I'll show you how that works. Um, whenever you can apply metadata for the things that you're sharing, now, these are things, a lot of the things that I'm saying here um, will sound technical, but your website can do them for you. You know, like if you've ever used an SEO plugin, you're already doing that, uh, applying that metadata so you can share things elsewhere. These are not just uh, things that I say, here, do this because it'd be really nice, even though it is. Um, it's also, hey, this is also going to help out your website, help you get found easier when people are searching, um, you know, help you stand out a bit more. Um, as uh, David said, automate as much as you can. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. Um, so I automate cross-posting to other websites. And uh, there's a great service called IndieWebify.me uh, where you can, after you've started doing some of these things, you can plug in your own URLs and test to make sure that they're working right. And it gives you uh, suggestions on how to fix it if it notices something not working. So, um, these two screenshots that I have here uh, are, the one on the left is from Mastodon. Um, it's about my profile there showing, you know, things like uh, when I joined, my pronoun and personal website links. So you can take links uh, on Mastodon 
And then I go to my own website. That's the screenshot that's on the right. Um, I just zoomed in on the uh, little URL thing showing that I linked to my Mastodon bio on my own website. Uh, and since I control the website, linked that bio, I basically proved to Mastodon that yes, I'm the person who owns that website that I put on my page, uh, which is why it shows up in green with a check mark, you know, verifying that that's me. Um, you can do that with a lot of other websites. You can do that with microblog. Um, Twitter actually does allow for this. Uh, other WordPress sites allow for it. GitHub allows for it. Um, Microsoft does. Uh, quite a few websites allow you to uh, include Realme links in there. In fact, um, a lot of them, you don't need to think about it. Uh, like for instance, on my GitHub page, it doesn't say here, put this link to your you know, website and put this uh, relation on it. It just automatically applies that for me. So again, most of these things I'm gonna say, here's what you should do, but usually there are great people out there, uh, including you know, here in the chat who are writing the software to help you not have to do that yourself. Um, one thing that I do do manually is I use micro formats uh, to make an H card that I put on my website. Um, so the, the code here, uh, it just looks like if you go to my personal website, this is a simple little uh, uh, paragraph on the side. You know, it's like two sentences long and it looks so much more um, confusing here, mainly because I have all this markup up here to show uh, who I am, uh, the URL to my website, my pronouns, um, an organization that I'm part of. Uh, and then the image that I have down there doesn't show just because it's so it'll go out as my profile photo uh, with my uh, H card. So this can be used by other websites to pull information about me and display. Um, some of the other websites that I already highlighted use this for that purpose. And uh, Jason mentioned that there's a neat browser extension that will show you the folks who are doing Realme on their website uh, when you browse the web, streetpass.social. I haven't seen that one, so I'm gonna take a look myself, thank you. Um, so I mentioned Posse earlier, uh, publish on your own website, syndicate elsewhere. Uh, oh, Dave is gonna keep calling me out for how long it's been since I've updated my website. You know what, uh, I'm gonna message you later and uh, just have you uh, do an audit for me. <laughs> no, um, no, I do appreciate you pointing that out. I'm gonna make note of it. Um, <laughs> uh -oh, don't promise that, uh, I might take you up on it. Um, anyway, so, uh, so two of the ways that I uh, put, uh, do things are, uh, sometimes I publish elsewhere and I put it back to my own website. That's what I used to do on places like Twitter. That's what I do with Mastodon. Um, but there's also things that you can do where you publish on your own website and send it elsewhere. So for instance, when I put a new blog post, I can have it automatically go to my Mastodon account and you know put out the link for everyone with an excerpt. Um, but I can also do things like manually create that link. Uh, again, with that uh, example that I showed you of the web mention before, I can create that link and then have, it, uh, have, have, have those responses go to my website as comments or as likes, as you know, boost, things like that. Um, I, I know people have different opinions about both of these. I personally think both of them are valid uh, because you know, my website is still part of that equation at some point. Um, and then uh, Dave mentioned Bridgie earlier. This is another one that I would recommend. It allows you to connect accounts on other websites uh, and use them with your own website. Um, so, you know, I can, whenever I make changes on GitHub, I just have it logging for me, like what I've done. <laughs> um, same when I post to Mastodon, I have it recording. Um, and I'm looking at some of the others here um, going like, oh yes, I used to use Medium. I used to use Flickr, I used to use Reddit, I used to use Facebook. Uh, I don't know, just a good reminder now that social media platforms aren't forever, even if they felt like it for a while. Um, Tumblr's back, Tumblr's still around. Um, so uh, in conclusion for things I have, uh, go check out the IndieWeb website. Um, yes, you can link uh, to Mastodon via Bridgie. Um, I think it's on, yeah, yeah, it's on there. Um, uh, but a lot of uh, useful information can be found on any web website, like every page has a lot of useful information, but there is specifically a WordPress page 
uh, that shares a ton of information. Um, I always recommend attending WordCamps and also say attend some indie web events if you can. Um, I, I, I know that it's been harder to do so over the last few years, uh, but I've really enjoyed the in-person events. It's where I've met people like, for instance, met David in person. Uh, and most important, I would say experiment on your own website. Um, as an example, I'm using a slideshow uh, plugin on my own website to put my slides. So they will be available for anyone to you know, look at, use, reuse in the future, uh, not, you know, not hosted on some third party platform. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's about what I have. Uh, I already saw plenty of questions, but Oh, hold on, another one. Um, my goal yeah, has been to bring people any to questions? my website. Oh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, in the meantime, uh, Linda asked, my goal has been to bring other people to my website, not the other way around. Is that consistent with any web concept? Um, for me, I would say yes, but the caveat being that's not my only concern. Um, like, I, I would much rather people go visit my website, you know, than go to another website to see my content. Um, but part of it for me is just ensuring that at the very least, I can still participate and be active on those other websites, you know, and not lose that interactivity. Um, you know, because unfortunately not everyone's going to come to your website to read a blog post, but some people will read it uh, elsewhere or they will. I mean, for me, I, I end up using a um, read it app to read things later. Uh, not exactly the same thing, but still, you know, I'm taking the content to consume elsewhere. And yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, I agree with David. Uh, you get to, as long as you can connect to those other websites from your website, um, you know, it's basically like you're there as well. Uh, there's been a lot of exciting developments over the past few months um, in the federated social media space. Um, just in the past week to, uh, I mean, see, I, I hesitate to call them clones, but like, you know, PixelFed is kind of an Instagram clone. Um, there are two Reddit clones that have gotten really popular. Um, and really cool thing about them is that you can follow those subreddits or uh, their version of them and users directly from your existing Mastodon account um, and, you know, vice versa. Uh, so I really like the fact that I can participate in a new space that's come up without necessarily having to, you know, jump into signing up for a new account somewhere. And, and David, that's and really the same thing with uh, PixelFed as well. You can mm -hmm. follow PixelFed accounts from Mastodon and, and vice versa. So I, I as somebody who uh, has done uh, and, and has uh, run a Mastodon server for the better part of a year now, it'll, it'll be a year coming up in like November. Uh, but I, I was, I've been on Mastodon for a while, but being able mm -hmm. to follow somebody on PixelFed, someone who like, oh, I just like their photos i don't have to go sign up for another pixel fed account i don't have to have an account on every one of these things to be able to like consume this content and that's so nice absolutely if if you i mean if you grew up with rss uh readers um you know knowing that you can follow everyone's website and not have to go click around every day and see who actually updated their website and you know where's the content coming and can i read it um it's, it's, I mean, in some ways similar to that. Uh, I like the fact that I can follow people um, and not have to be in those other places. And it's not even always because I don't want to be in those other places, but like, you know, I'm going to keep picking on Twitter. Uh, there are Twitter, um, not Twitter clones, uh, Twitter mirrors out there. So you can, uh, you know, some people can set up an account to, with a Twitter mirror and you can still follow their Twitter content from Mastodon. Um, but it also just means that you can make sure that you're keeping up with the things that you want to keep up with and you know not have to go everywhere. There's too many websites. <laughs> there you go. I've, I've solved the internet. There's too many websites. Um, actually, no, I think that's wrong um, because I think we should all have our own websites and all have a little bit more control over what we get to do online. I will pick on Twitter all day, but uh, as Linda said, pick on Twitter. I can do so all day, but um, uh, I'll, I'll do that uh, after <laughs> after the presentation. Uh, and David recommends the Activity Plug, uh, excuse me, Activity Pub plugin for WordPress. Uh, oh yes, I didn't bring that up because I wasn't sure if uh, 
uh, Matisse was going to be in here, but um, a lot of the plugins that I mentioned, I didn't mention Activity Plug plugin, um, and I can't even say it now, uh, are now being sponsored by Automatic. So I expect them to grow even more than they already have. I think um, we I did address most of the questions. Any other questions? Oh, <laughs> yeah, and just scrolling back to see if we missed anything. Um, think I, so. I just did a full scrub, and I'm I'm not <laughs> seeing anything. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mention um, the Activity Pub plugin, and I use it on my own website, David. When I post a new uh, post, you know, I can I can send it straight to a. It's kind of like shows up as like a. Uh, I want to say almost like a fake uh, Mastodon account, um, as in. You know, it's not one that people are going to discover the same way, but if they have the username there, they can just subscribe to it as if they're subscribing to a uh, feed. That that might actually be a good solution for for Linda, since um, you know uh, Linda wants to have people coming to their site. Like the, the you know you basically um, you know are, are sending out notifications like a new post has gone up, etc. Um, <laughs> through that activity pub plugin, it, it definitely uh, could be helpful for that use case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um... You know, I, I don't uh, I don't really do a lot of stats about uh, um, yeah you know, I don't check to see where people are coming from to visit my content, but uh, it does go up to my Mastodon account, and I know people comment about it there, so at least some people are clicking. Um, let's see, when did the indie web movement begin? Uh, that I have a feeling I'm going to find the answer by going to the indie web website. Um, <laughs> at least a decade now. Uh, I don't have at an least. exact time. Uh, I think we need to start celebrating a birthday. Yeah, so 2011. Hmm. Um, I don't know if there's a specific date that his birthday can be celebrated, like WordPress's uh, 20th <laughs> birthday just happened. <laughs> um, have we encountered yeah, any downsides? According to the website, uh, I'm seeing the first indie web camp, at least, was in 2011 in Portland. And David just added that to the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, sorry, and then uh, next question was, uh, have I seen any downsides, have I encountered any downsides with integrating my website with Anyverse or Fediverse? Um, the downsides for me personally have been, um, as mentioned, uh, API changes. So since, you know, it's not just having my website talk to other websites, but those other websites also playing ball. And by playing ball, more often than not, that means those websites not purposefully blocking you. Um, as a lot of them do, because that's part of their business model is keeping you know, your attention focused solely on their platform. Um, the biggest downside that I've encountered, which may or may not be a downside, depending on how much you like to experiment, is uh, how much time you can spend changing things. Um, I don't do nearly as much work as uh, other people like, uh, like other David in chat does in terms of building new tools and uh, new apps, new websites to manage these things. Um, I, I get to stand on the shoulders of all the people who can do a lot more technical heavy lifting than I can. <laughs> um, so I get to use all of these tools, but that also means, you know, yeah, there are so many tools out there. There's so many ways that you can uh, uh, connect. July 18th, so almost coming up on a birthday. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Linda asked, talking about uh, the Realme and uh, HB cards. Yes, uh, those were two screenshots that I had to uh, go. Um, so, uh, so in this case, um, like I mentioned that these websites usually take care of that for you. Basically, you're going to put a uh, link on your website pointing to that other website, and then that other website, you put a link there pointing to your personal website. Um, those links will include, uh, you know, if you, if you look at the code for link, it has like the a href equals, you know, whatever the URL is, it will also include um, an attribute REL and the value is me uh, for that. Um, that is a good, uh, I'm going to add a screenshot or I'm gonna add a little bit of a code block showing one of those links specifically to the slide uh, afterward tonight to make it a little more clear, thank you. 
um, and then uh, the the H card. So this uh, block of code here, um, that that div has a class of H card uh, that will indicate. Oops, sorry. Um, that will indicate to places that are trying to. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on the word. Not not scrape it. Uh, that are taking that data and uh, processing it. Um, you know all the things that are in here. And yes, as David pointed out, I need to update some of these uh, classes here. And I'm going to use that microformats wiki page. No, no, sorry, wrong one. Um, I will get the. Other info. Sorry, <laughs> I'm blanking. Um, and do I count? Oh, uh, I I wouldn't have the answer to uh, when when I would count uh, from the first any webcam or when they got together. <laughs> I um, I mean I think David might be the only one of any of these tools that I use who I've actually met in person. Um, you know, I don't, I don't make it out to any webcams myself. Um, I just really enjoy this and like sharing with people because, uh, you know, like I said, there are a lot of people who can do a lot more, show you a lot, but um, I don't know. I just figure I can help at least be a cheerleader. <laughs> yes, I haven't attended a, uh, a WordCamp since uh, before the pandemic either. Looking forward to seeing people at WordCamp US this year. Uh, I think yeah. uh, I got all the questions that are in there currently. Anyone else? I think so. And um, David has shared some information about an IndieWeb meetup. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a link there in the chat. Um, yeah, thank yes. you for that. That is the same link that I put uh, here as well, in case you want to reference it later after the uh, ah. Zoom call ends. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Right. Um, and, and I've been dropping uh, links for folks in the chat. I'm not sure if that yes. gets uh, brought along for the replay or not, but there you go. Yeah, I believe it does not. But just a reminder to folks that are watching this live, you can save the chat. Um, so if you hit the three dots that are to, for more options in the Zoom chat, you can save the chat. Um, and all the links um, and conversation will be included in there. Yeah. and. Uh... Since this presentation is a living document, um, a lot of the links that have been posted are already in the presentation, uh, which will be shared you know, with everyone later. And uh, I'm going to look through, and if there are ones, for instance, the microformats link that I don't have currently, um, I can add them to the presentation so they'll all be in one place. Perfect. Thank you. So if we um, don't have any more questions, we'll start wrapping up. Um, you still have an opportunity to ask them questions as I just go over uh, our our closing remarks. Um, so I'll go ahead and. Do you want me to stop share so you can? Yeah, thank you. Um, here we go. And again, um, all of our videos of these online workshops are. Uh, post on WordPress TV. I uh, usually within a couple days of a presentation. Um, so you can find all the recordings at this link that I've shared in the chat. Um, so this is what um, these are specifically the online workshops that we um, that the training team um, uh, records and posts um, every every day almost every week. Uh, we have multiple workshops. Um, and again, learn.wordpress.org is where you can find more educational materials. Um, if you host um, a meetup um, or if you want to present at a meetup, you can use lesson plans um, that are on Learn WordPress to teach your community community about um, using and developing for WordPress. Um, and then there's also some short video tutorials um, that are here, uh, links on the homepage. Uh, those are usually between five to 10 minutes long um, about a specific WordPress topic. Um, and um, yeah, finally, if you want to keep in touch, you can join the WordPress Slack at chat.wordpress.org and join uh, the training channel if you want to talk to the folks that um, that work on Learn WordPress. Um, and some contact information here. Um, I have uh, listed my and David's uh, Mastodon 
profiles here if you'd like to uh, reach out there. Um, again, if you're interested in presenting any content for Learn WordPress, uh, please get in touch. Uh, we can help make that happen. Um, yes, and Jason has also shared his uh, Mastodon profile in the chat. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for being here and thanks for learning along with us. Um, and as I mentioned, learn.wordpress.org is where you can find more educational resources uh, focused on WordPress. Um, thank you, David, for presenting today and sharing your knowledge. Um, I, I know that this is a topic that you're, you're passionate about and um, I've always been interested in as well. So um, it was great for, for you to do this presentation today. So thank you. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah, of course, anytime. And thank you, Jason, for being our co-host today. Happy to do it. <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. Cheers.